after those words, <laughs> let's see if I can live up to them. If I can speak a little bit about Wendy. I started here at Grace Family back in uh, 2008. My husband and I came for the first time because our grandson, he was my grandson, but he's now his grandson, who was only eight at the time, he would call us every week, and some of you may have heard my story on this, and every Saturday, like clockwork, he'd call and say, Grandma, are you and Mr. Jose coming to church tomorrow? And I say, son, you asked me that last week. He said, I'm gonna ask you every week until you guys come. And I thought, oh my goodness. I said, well, you know, I belong to another church. Uh, I go to Allen Temple. And, you know, it wouldn't be right for me to just leave my, my church and abandon them to come to be. He said, but you'd be coming to be with me. And I said, you are probably going to be in one of those kid areas that I've heard that you guys love so much. And he goes, yeah, but we have God there too. And I thought, okay, I'm going to have to go. So I said to Jose, we're going to have to go at least one Sunday so he can stop calling us. Well, the short story is we finally came. This one Saturday he calls and I said, you know what, Tyler, I think we'll come. I'm going to talk to Mr. Jose and see, but I think we'll come. And I mentioned it to Jose, and he goes, oh, yeah, absolutely, we'll go. Now, my, my husband hadn't been to church in forever. He and I both were in law enforcement, and we work, I felt like seven days a week, but we worked 12-hour shifts, and you were always rotating, and you never knew when you were going to have a Sunday off. And you didn't have many. And so that was his excuse. I always found a way to, to get there one way or the other. I would, would go, but not take him, of course. He would not go long, and I wouldn't push him because I'm sure you all already know that um, we can't make decisions for other people. Um, we can try to help them get there, but you can't make them. And because Jose is my fourth husband, I had already learned that you cannot change a man He's got to want the change, and it's got to be coming from the Lord through me, the Word, speaking to him. But it's just going to help him along. He has to make that decision. Well, the very first time we came to Grace Family to visit, we were living in sin. We were not married. We were shacking up is what we used to call it back in my day. I'm not sure what the young people are calling it. But... We left the church. Pastor Craig had done a number on us. We didn't even talk. From the church home, there was nothing to say. He had already said it all. He shamed us so bad. We were speechless. I mean, I'm in the kitchen, and Jose comes up behind me, and he says, okay, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And I said, oh, my gosh, at least the silence is broken. Yeah. I said, just think, we could be married already if we had listened to Tyler weeks ago. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I'm thinking so. And I said, well, you know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Let's just go down and do it. He goes, yeah, I think that's what we need to do. So we went in and we spoke to the pastor at the jail because that's where we worked. And we told him our story. And he goes, well, when do you guys want to do it? And we go, well, I said, I think you still, we still got to go get the license. And um, how soon do you think? He goes, well, I have an opening next week. And I said, okay, well, let's just do it. So we did. I called the kids up and go, well, your mom's getting married again. And they're like, okay, mom. <laughs> you know, husband number four. And that's another story for another time, but I had to share that with you because that's the impact that Grace Family has had on us and the whole family. We just love this church. And just looking in this room, I can tell that a lot of us are in the same boat. We love what the church has to offer for us and what it's giving us in our hearts and our families and deep in our souls. And it's such a beautiful thing, uh, ladies. I, I can't... 
I can't stress to you enough how keep coming. Keep coming. Keep bringing your friends and your children. Let your kids get that foundation that is needed to make their lives a better life to live, knowing what's driving them every day when they open their eyes. What woke them up in the morning and what's going to carry them through the day. It's not going to be what we tell them about, don't forget your jacket, don't talk in school, don't do this, don't do that. Your children need to be grounded in the word of the Lord at the earliest time that they can start to comprehend God's word, your children need that because it will make a difference. When I see bullying, the bullying that's going on in the schools and all the terrible things that are happening and we're blaming it on all these things, tears come to my eyes because I think, dear God in heaven, these kids are missing something from home that leadership that they need in, at home that they're not getting. And it's not easy. It's harder now than ever because there's so much peer pressure out there. And this is totally away from my message. I don't know where this came from. I, God has said, okay, this is what you say, so here I am, I'm saying it. But I cannot impress on you enough. Bring your children to church. And I'm all in with Pastor Craig. If they don't want to come, who's paying the bills? Who's putting a roof over your head? Oh, you will go to church. S don't just stress it. Make it a must-have in your home because it is so, so important to your future. And even with all of that, it's still a, a rough road. It's hard sometime. But if God didn't keep us on our knees, how quickly would we not have him in our presence? You know how that goes as soon as things start going good. Oh, I think I'll go to the mall today. I'll go to church next Sunday. I'll miss beautiful moms this week. Ah, no big deal. I really got to get that special dress that I need to wear. And you push God to the back burner. You got to keep him up front, up close and personal at all times. Now let's, let's get on the message I'm going to be talking about what to do while you're waiting on God and just the fact that you've got to wait on God time and time and time again throughout your life. It just has to be. In speaking on waiting on God and the strongholds that cause us to doubt him, and then we're going to go on and go over some of the things to do as you wait on the Lord. Waiting takes a great deal of patience. None of us like to wait, but it's part of life. The simple things in life, waiting at the traffic light, making mama's special cookies, and prayers that we need to get in. Our problem is that we lose patience and we want to do things our way. Uh, the traffic light's no problem unless you're really late. And what do you do? You cut through the gas station. And worse yet, you come to a complete stop or you just keep on rolling. The cookies, no worries. I can get that milk later. I've got to stop and get my coffee. But our prayers... Hmm. Hard to be patient, especially when we have no idea when the prayer will be granted or even if it will be granted. The traffic light problem may result in us getting a ticket, and the cookies, we may pull them out early and have a gooey mess. But our impatience with our prayers may cause us to make changes in our lives that are not the best. So, that being said, patience is hard to do, easy to forget, and whether we like it or not, it helps build character. That's right, 
it builds character in knowing that if we are patient, things usually come out a lot better. What else does all this waiting do? Sometimes it leads us to discouragement. If I'm late because the traffic light, because of a traffic light, I may not have made that job interview anyway. I may not have gotten the job. If the cookies don't cook all the way, so what if they don't taste so great? And of course, as we wait on our prayers, we may see our loved ones move farther away, sons and daughters continuing down that dangerous path. And we've been praying for them. But you have to know that God's plan is always going to be the best for you. I tend to believe that this is the time that God wants us to really trust him even more and build our faith in him. And finally, worry. All these things will have an outcome, but we are not sure if it's going to be the outcome that we want just causes more worry. If we make it to the job interview on time, there's just no guarantee that you're going to get the job. When we wait for those cookies, who's to say that you remember to put in the right ingredients? And of course, as we wait for God, we may not like the answer we get. But in Matthew 6, 25 through 27, it tells us, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's in the Bible. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father, he feeds them. Are you not much, much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Do you have that power? Easier said than done. I know. But as we get stronger in our relationship with God and quit limiting what we think he will do, all of these things in that scripture will be taken care of. And probably the biggest reason we worry is because we're asking ourselves, does God even care about me and my problems? There are millions and billions of people in the world. Why is he wasting or spending time with me? What have I done to deserve God's time. Of course he does. From the very beginning, the Bible tells us in the very first book in the Bible, Genesis 28, 15, and it says, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. God does not lie. He doesn't lie. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Now, <laughs> you can't depend on a lot of man's promises. Not your husband, not your job, not your girlfriend, but God don't lie. And when he makes you a promise, that's the one thing you can take to the bank and it's going to still be there. Always. Great promise. Now, if we can just accept it as truth and not rely on our own ways, I got to stop right there and say, that's how I got four husbands thinking that I had it all going on. And I'm not going to be without a husband. I'm just going to be replacing him with another one. If only I had gone 
to my go-to book, the Bible, and spent a little time there, I may have done a better job. Now, I tell myself, because we don't like to take blame for things, that um, I learned something behind every one of those husbands. And I did. And I also got a whole lot of heartache. If only I had just relied on Jesus as my guide. If I had just waited on God to send me that special someone. If I'd only asked him to send me someone special. But you know, back then, and I say back then because I'm, I'm an old lady now, and I can, I'm, it's very easy for me to say that I am 64 years old, 64 years young, and I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of all my scars along the way because with those scars has come wisdom and a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge, ladies, not something that I read from a book. A lot of it has come from the spankings that God has placed on my behind. <laughs> and the scars that I have that I can look in the mirror and see, all because I just had to do things my way. But God's way is the only way. It's the only way. God is your father and he loves you more than anyone on this earth. And he wants nothing but to give you your heart's desires. If it's good for you. If it's something that is going to be for your good, God's going to be all behind it. Now, what I mean by that, that means that every prayer that you send up, you may not get that answer that you think you should be getting. And when you don't, you can about rest assured that it's because it's probably, you're probably asking for something that's not so great for you. Or maybe it's timing. Maybe the timing isn't right. Because we plan, you know, a lot of us women, women we're planners. We got to have things, you know, A, B, C, it's got to work. It's got to be right there, uh, just the way I need it to line up. Or, or I'm going to be all in a disarray because what am I going to do? Throw that out the window. Throw that out the window. Anything that you're troubled about, pray over it and receive the blessing before it comes. Because you're going to get a blessing. It's going to happen for you. But don't feel like I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying and nothing's happening. It's not happening because it's not time. Either it's not time or you're not ready. We had a lot of women praying for a husband I'm single, I'm praying for a husband. Oh, I've been praying for five, 10 years, still haven't met a man. My baby daughter is 36 years old. And at least once a week, she tells me, dear God in heaven, I go to church. I'm at Bible study, still haven't met a man. And I said, well, hmm, I guess you need to spend more time on your knees. You get knee pads if you have to, but you stay on your knees. And when God says so, when you're ready, he'll send you that special someone. But not until. And if you start trying to bump it up a bit with your wisdom, you're going to make a mess. If you don't believe, uh, look at your mother. You're going to make a mess of things. And as, because I'm a grandma does not mean that I have all the answers and that I've done everything correctly because clearly I have not. So I'm just saying to you, spend more time in the word of God if you feel like your prayers are not coming back to you. You're sending them out, but they're not coming back. Spend more time on your knees. You can't spend too much time praying and asking God to help you with your desires. But what if he says no? Are you ready for that? The unexpected answers? Probably not. None of us like being denied, rejected, or just being told no, because most of us like having our way. Think about it, though. I'm sure you've heard that we have that narrow view of what's going on. Our God has the full view today and tomorrow. Trust in that and not, that we, and not what we think is best. 
Okay, we've talked about the strongholds, it being impatient, uh, discouragement, and worry. Now let's talk about some of the things that we can do while we're waiting for God. To start off with, how about believing that the God who saved you and put you in the seat you're sitting in right here, right now, also hears your cries. In Roman 8.32, great scripture, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, gracious, graciously give us all things? Think about that. He gave his son up for you and for me. Why would we ever think that he would deny us? Why would he deny us? We should watch with expectancy and be prepared for unexpected turns and twists. Watch with expectancy, not wondering, but expect it. Like I said, when you pray a prayer, when you get up from your knees, receive it. Know that it is done because God is the great I am. Because he said so, ask me and you shall receive. The Bible says it. And if it's in that Bible, as I keep telling you, you must believe it. Be prepared, though, for the unexpected turns and twists because everything's not going to be the way we want it to be. In my life, God has answered prayers, but not always the way I had hoped that it would be done. But you know what? The outcome was always for my good. And I was always better than I could have ever imagined. My first husband, we had three beautiful children. Now, the one thing that I did learn early on is my mom says, um, marriage, that's a commitment. That's a huge deal. It's not just like fun and game. There's a lot going on with that. Do you understand that? Oh, of course, Mom. I got this. Of course. Well, three marriages later, and here I am, alone, raising my kids alone. But I would not give up on my God. I kept on praying. I kept on trying to do what I thought was right. But then I was open. I kept that open mind that, Lord, help me. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a little whippersnapper. I'm trying to learn still. So what if I got three kids? I'm still learning because truly, I'm messing up here. I need your help. And I just kept waiting to hear from him with expectation, knowing that in a matter of time, I said, well, you know what? It's just a matter of time that I'm going to get it right because I know my God is real. I never lost faith in him. I had one son and two daughters, and a lot of you know this about me, and my son was murdered at age 22. That was a very tough time for me. And God and I, we had several talks. Because I had to get an understanding about why it is that you took my boy. You only gave me one. And you took him back. He was my rock. He was a good kid. My children were what, back in the 80s, they call them latchkey kids. And 
I was in law enforcement. And I was blessed with uh, one deputy that worked my zone, my, the zone of my own. And I would send her messages on the computer and go, would you run by and just check on my kids? And she did. She was wonderful about that. And she texted me back. I mean, well, I call it text and we call it, uh, it was a digital me message. And she say, you know, all is well in the nest. And I would tell her it's because of my son. He's such a good boy. He watches over his sisters. He knows that I'm out here just trying to keep a roof over their head. All by myself. But I got God. I know God's with us. And I tell the kids at, at the house, I may not be here, but God is watching over you. Do not be afraid. I'll be home soon. And my son was one of those boys that if I told him something, I never had to argue with him about it. He did what I said. I tell him that if the, when the street light comes on, you all are to be in the house and the door is locked and you give mom a call. And he did that faithfully. So when he got to be about 15 or 16, my mother said, um, okay, you've been doing this since this boy was about 12. You've had him watching over his sisters. And you know if somebody were to report you, you'd probably be in trouble. You work with the law, you know how that works. And I said, I know, but because I work with the law, I don't trust a lot of people. Because I know what's out there. And I know that God is the best babysitter I could have. And I have good kids. They're going to be fine. My neighbor that lives next door, she would go over periodically and check on them through the evening. And again, I don't know why I'm sharing this, but... I just kept saying, Lord, I know there's a plan for me, and I'm not going to give up on you. I could give up on the world, and which would have been a good thing for me then, but I didn't. So I just kept making mistakes that didn't have to be if I would have spent more time in the Word. Look for guidance. Everything is in that Bible. Everything. I was telling one of the ladies here tonight that just last week I saw the word meddler in the Bible. I'm like, when did that go in there? <laughs> because that's something that I beat myself up with my, and, and, and I'm taking this off, but meddler, it's in there, everything's in there. And I tend to have a problem with that with my daughter and her family putting my two cent in when I need to, I think the young people say, stay in my lane. <laughs> and now that I know that God says that I'm to stay in my lane, it's going to be a lot easier. So I'm saying to you, if only back then I had read more, God only knows what I would have found in there that I didn't know was there. Stay in the word. Be prepared for the unexpected turns and twists. And know that you're not going to always know the outcome of what's going to happen in your life. But it's going to be good. Even through the hard times, it's going to be good. Now, some of you may be saying, well, how can she stand up there and say she lost her son and it was good? Well, every Easter is pretty tough for me. And why? Because I think about poor Mary. Can you imagine what Mary was going through? When you see your son carrying that cross and you know what he's headed for, dear God in heaven, just imagine the pain. But God gave it all up for our good. He gave it up for us. How can we have trouble trusting him and believing in him? How can you have trouble with that? 
Do you know anybody out here that you can just say, oh, John will give his life for me? Oh, I'll just call Dad. He'll run out in front of a car for me. Um, is there anybody here? Very few, if any. But God did that for us. And we cannot let his death be in vain, ladies. We've got to go all the way, do everything we can in our power to remember, believe, and trust in our almighty God. We need to put our hope in his word. That's right. Search it out in the Bible and claim it. We may be tempted to put our hope in others. The doctor will cure us. The husband will love us. But it is only when we put our hope in Christ that we can be assured that we will not be disappointed. Psalms 130, the fifth verse, it tells us to do exactly this. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. God gave doctors the wisdom to cure us. He showed us how to love. But sometimes it takes a miracle that only he can provide. Only that miracle that God can place upon us. And this one is a big one. We should trust in the Lord and not your own understanding. But don't forget the rest of the proverb. It says, in all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. Yes, this means all your ways. You can't have one foot in and one foot out of the church as a Christian. Man, do I know about that one. What about you? Are you all in for Jesus? Are you just about Jesus on Sundays and maybe a few Thursdays here and there? Uh, are you all in for the Lord? All in. You have to let the world go and come on in. We love having you here at Grace Family. We love loving on you. And we will share with you. And we will do anything and everything we can to help you if it's in our power. You've got a wonderful group of people here. Embrace it. And you know that you're blessed. You're really blessed. So if you're here because you're here every week, or if this is your first visit here, or your second visit here, and you're kind of on the fence as to whether or not you want to be here, decide today that, oh, yeah, this is where I want to be. This is where I'm going to be. Yeah, don't make it a possible. Make it a positive. This is where I'm going to be. Because that little step in your life could change everything, could turn it around, could turn into something that bigger than you ever knew was possible. And that's your walk with God. We have to be all in to see the full benefit of being his children. That is not to say that he won't bless us because we made mistakes, but we can know that if we do all of that, he asks that he will bless us. Resist the fretting and refrain from anger. Psalms 37, the seventh chapter through the eighth verse, and it says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways. Now, ladies, you know one thing that we are guilty of. 
Oh, did you hear Mary got that job? I can't believe she got that job. She doesn't deserve it. I know who she really is. She doesn't do all that. I bet you she got a special relationship with the boss. She didn't get it because she's doing good. The meddling. It's not a good thing. And then you got to know that you don't know what's going on with other people. You don't know other folks' story. No matter what you hear, what you read, unless you're in the home with those people, you don't know what's going on with them. You do not know their story. You don't know what's happened to them along the way. You don't know what's got them to where they are. And you don't know what's driving them to where they're headed. So we need to cut that out. Leave that alone. We have got so much going on in our own lives, trust me. I mean, maybe you don't, but I, my plate's full. And if we would spend more time trying to get what we got going on in order with God, you don't have a lot of time to be spending a whole bunch of time with what the neighbor's doing and what your girlfriend's doing and what uh, the table leader's doing and no. Stay in the word. You're confused about something? Ask God for the answer. Ask him. You know, a friend of mine told me it was a funny story for me. She said, oh yeah, my uncle was a pastor and he was up preaching in, 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 in the pulpit and my dad was, had a crazy look on his face. And when, when church was over, I, asked, I said, dad, she said, I, I, I said, dad, what? Uncle Bob was up there preaching, and you were just looking like you didn't believe a thing he was saying. And he said, well, I got to go home and get the Bible and look it up because I don't know where that's at in the Bible. I don't think it's there. And I laughed, and I said, do we not all do that at some point? We're judging what other people are saying and what other people are doing. And do you really know whether or not what they're doing or what they're saying is bang on with what's in the Bible, you've got to know the word. You've got to know better to do better. And if you don't really know, if you haven't eyeballed it on paper, you might want to stay away from that. It just makes, it brings on a, just a wicked, evil persona for yourself that is unneeded. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leaves only to evil things. Did you get that last part? Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. What good do we get out of becoming angry? What has it ever done for you? I would guess that for the most part, people, for the most part, getting angry has only led to a bigger problem and more hurt. Heed this warning. Anger does not lead, does lead to evil. Revenge, jealousy, and just pure old hate. Be strong, ladies, and take courage. And I know this is a hard one, being strong, when you think it's only you. But you have to know that God is always there and will never forsake you. In Hebrews 13, 5, it says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Again, read the whole scripture and understand that once we are in unison with Christ, we can become content with what we have and maybe all those things that we are praying for that are important. And maybe some of those things that we are praying for that maybe aren't so important. Wait on God's promise instead of going your own way. God's goodness is promised to us Wait patiently for him, no matter how long you must wait. 
Think about Sarah, how long she waited for a child. Look how God showed up. God is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think. When we wait for him, we will never be disappointed. Remember the blessings yet to come. This makes us look back and recognize all that he has already done for us. Journal those blessings so that you have a reminder, a reminder of things God has already done for you. Write it down. And just every so often, go back and just read over it. It's good medicine for the soul because we're quick to forget. So I never was one to journal, but what a powerful thing it is. I've learned to do that since I've been here at Grace. Sometime if I'm just feeling a little disconnected, just to read back over the blessings that God has given me, it's powerful. Just try it if you've never done it, and you're gonna see, you're gonna get a great reward from that. We have very short-term memories, especially for the good things, but we can remember back to kindergarten on the bad things that happened to us. You know, when little Johnny stepped on our toe or whatever happened when we were in second and third grade, we can remember all those things. But the things that happened yesterday, we can't remember it. I, I, to let you in, my husband and I, a little tit for tat in our relationship, I'll say. We struggle with, um, he's the kind of guy that if he's not happy about something, he can't come out with it right then. And some of you may have a husband like that. He says, oh, no, I'm not going to talk about it right now. But we'll talk about it. And me, I'm like, no, you got, you're going to come to me on Saturday and ask me about something that happened on Monday? I'm in the season of life that I can't remember what we did on Monday. That's over. I'm done with that. Well, do you remember when you, no, I don't remember that. I'm sorry. Don't remember that. Um, but we have to see waiting as an opportunity to experience God's goodness. So no matter what you're having to wait on, no matter what's happening in your life and it demands a little patience, you've got to accept that as that opportunity for you to just have a little conversation with God and see what God thinks about what you're going through. He answers. It's difficult for us to think that, um, I don't know, I never heard God speak. I've heard pastors say, I've never heard God speak. I hear him speak to me all the time, all the time. He does talk back, but you've got to be willing to hear him. Stop hearing what you want and what you're thinking. Shut that part of the brain. Eh, cut that off. Get in a little peace and quiet for yourself and wait to hear from the Lord. And it may not be in a voice, ladies. It may be in an action. It may be in something that's happening right around you. But God answers prayers. And he answers you just when you're talking to him. You're going to hear from him. But you got to be willing to hear what he's saying. So see it as an opportunity to experience God's goodness. In Colossians 4, 2, it tells us to continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful with thanksgiving. One of the things that tend to happen is that we stop praying for our wants when we don't get an immediate answer. We think, I must not deserve it. God doesn't have time for me or any number of other crazy thoughts. But we have to keep praying for the things we want. This is part of the learning process, to keep things at the foot of Jesus, for him to correct in his perfect way and timing. We will always have to wait, ladies, but God's word alone is unshakable. We can wait for the Lord knowing that no matter how dark the night is, his light will break through in our lives bring joy through a more intimate relationship with him, him. And is that not what we want? A more intimate relationship with Christ. Let's bow our heads. Father God, 
We come to you this morning, Father, just laying at your feet. Just so thankful, Father, for the presence of you. Lord, I thank you for every lady that took the time out of her busy schedule today to come and to just hear more of your word, to learn more about you, to get a better, closer relationship with you, Father. Lord, you are the amazing I am. You're our good, Lord. You are our trusting weapon in this lifetime. We thank you, Father God, for covering all of these women here. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that I know that you have for them and their families. Thank you, Lord, for allowing them to just wake up today. We thank you for the lives that you have taken on before us that is giving us direction and purpose and a reason, Lord. We don't understand everything that you do. But did you not tell us that we would not understand everything, but that we must just trust you, believe in you? I thank you for allowing me to be able to stand here before these women and to be in the midst of so many beautiful, godly people. Thank you, Father. Lord, I ask that you will go with every one of these women as they leave today. And I pray that there is something, something that they have heard here, Lord, that has touched their hearts. That will help them in their next week walk, as I know it will, Lord. Something, there will be a light that will come on. Maybe a prayer, Jesus. Or maybe there's the desire that you're going to place in their heart to pick up their Bible and search for you, Lord. To be all in for you. We love you and we adore you. And we just thank you for this precious time to fellowship and be in community with other women like ourselves. Women that are just wanting to be and know more about you. We thank you, Father. We ask that you bless this church, bless the leaders of the church, and bless our pastor, Lord, for the insight that he has had in his life that has given him the vision to give us what we have here. We are all in for you, Father, and we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, ladies.